and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing my top tips for catching the high speed trains in China. China has gone from a country with virtually no railways to a country with the world's longest high speed train network. There's over 12,000 miles of railway in China now. In virtually China at all. Um, it makes travelling through China a lot easier than it used to be and a lot quicker too as I'm sure you can imagine. When we were travelling in China we noticed that catching a train over there is very different to how it is back here in the UK. There are certain things you have to be aware of to make it a smooth, easy process. So that's what I'm going to be sharing with you today. The first thing to be aware of when catching a high speed train in China is that the stations are all quite far out of the city centre. So if you are hoping to get an early train in the morning, then make sure you've looked at where the station is and book a hotel close to there, as otherwise it could take you at least half an hour to get to the station from the city centre. The second thing to know about catching a high speed train in China is that the stations are absolutely massive. They are so much bigger than anything we have here in the UK and they're pretty impressive too. Even if the first few times we went to a station, we were wondering why exactly they've been built so big. So bear in mind that it could easily take you half an hour to get from the ticketing office to the platform that your train is leaving from. So just make sure you've left yourself enough time with the train that you've booked to be able to make that walk. You can pretty much guarantee that when you're in a rush, the platform you need to be away from wherever you are at that particular point in time. When you've got to the station and you're looking to buy your ticket, you might be tempted to try and use the machines. I know we were because we thought that it meant we didn't have to deal with the language barrier and the queue was also much smaller too. But be warned because you won't be able to use the tickets unless you have a Chinese identity card. You can only get a ticket from the machine if you're able to scan this card. And no, unfortunately, a normal passport just won't do it. Be aware that the queues at the counter to buy your tickets are very variable. Most of the time we travelled by high speed train, we didn't really have to queue and we were wondering why the ticket halls were built so big. The last train we caught from Guangzhou down to somewhere near Macau, the ticket hall was rammed. It was absolutely packed. We ended up queuing for about an hour, so make sure that you've left yourselves plenty of time again to get to wherever it is you want to go. Whilst you can book your train tickets for Chinese high speed trains online, I would recommend you don't. This way you don't have to pay the booking fee and even if you had bought your ticket online, unless you'd paid extra for them to deliver it to your hotel room, you still have to join the queue and wait in line for your ticket anyway. So not only do you save yourself a little bit of money by just going and queuing, also don't have to worry about rushing through the station or you don't get the stress of waiting in line, looking at your watch and knowing that your time towards your train is just ticking away. As with most of China, you can only pay in cash for your tickets at the train station. You can't pay by card at all unless you have a Union Pay credit card. That means no Visa, no MasterCard, and we didn't see any cash points either at the train station. When you arrive at the train station, you have plenty of cash for your tickets. I do have a travel hack though for you if you are hoping to travel on more of a budget when traveling on the high speed trains in China. When we booked our last ticket, for the trains we had spent about an hour and a half in the queue when we got to the front and found that the ticket price for the train we wanted to catch was actually more than double the price of the price we'd seen online for it so we ended up booking standing tickets for the train which cost about fifty dollars less than the second class seating when we got on the train we actually managed to have a seat anyway as the train wasn't full. So if you're hoping to get a cheaper ticket for the high speed trains, then why not try and book a standing ticket and see if you're lucky when you get on the train if there's any spare seats. Make sure you always have a Chinese translation ready for the place you want to get to, on your phone or on a bit of paper. When you go to the stations in China, there is very, very little in English. You might get lucky and see signs like exit or toilet, but most of it will be in Chinese. So if you have on your phone the destination that you want to go to and you have the Chinese symbols or even if you've managed to get someone at a hotel or a hostel to help you out with the Chinese translation for I would like a ticket to wherever it is you're going then you will find it so much easier when you get to the counter and you can just show that bit of paper or that phone to the person at the ticket counter and you'll just instantly be understood. It will save you a lot of hassle. You should also be aware that you will need your passport for booking train tickets in China. You should have your passport on you anyway because it is kind of like a rule in China that you should have your identity on you and you'll be able to show your visa should you ever get stopped anywhere. But in case you are hoping to go the day before and book your ticket and then go back with all your bags the, the next day, just remember to take your passport with you. Another big difference between train stations back at home and in China is that you have to go through an airport style security. 
Be aware that you will have to put your bags through a big scanning machine and you'll also have to walk through one yourself. We didn't get anything taken off us, but obviously we'd already been on the plane to get to China, so we didn't have anything restricted anyway. But on the metros in China, I did get some dry shampoo taken off me. So you might find that you get some items like that taken off you, just to be aware. So the final tip for getting the trains in China is to just make sure you've left yourself enough time. I know I've said it throughout the video, but it really is the most important tip for catching the high speed trains. You just don't know how big that station is going to be and it could easily take you half an hour to get from the ticketing office to the platform. You might also have to queue for security. If you're hoping to get to your next destination then you really want to make sure you've left yourself around two hours from when you've left your hostel or hotel to when your train goes. Really you should just think of catching trains in China as like going to the airport anywhere else. Make sure you've left yourself enough time. That's it for my top tips for traveling on the high-speed rail network in China. I really hope you found them useful. And although getting the high-speed trains might be slightly more expensive than other forms of transport such as catching the bus, it really does make it so much quicker and easier to get from A to B in such a large country. If you've enjoyed this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you next time.